The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, which is a single-seat, single-engine, all-weather stealth multi-role fighter, is undergoing final development and testing by the United States. The Pentagon began the F-35 program in 2001 with an aim to develop a cost-effective replacement for the U.S. military's F-15, F-16 and F-18 fighters and reconnaissance aircraft and A-10 close air support warplanes. Apart from the United States, the primary customer and financial backer, the United Kingdom, Italy, Netherlands, Canada, Turkey, Australia, Norway and Denmark are also part of the program. Many other nations like Japan and Israel are also deploying the fighters. S-400 Triumph is an anti-aircraft weapon system developed by Russia's Almaz Central Design Bureau in the 1990s as an upgrade of the S-300 family. It has been in service with the Russian Armed Forces since 2007. It was designed to defend against aircraft including 5th generation stealth fighters, bombers, AWACS, cruise missiles and ballistic missile. It is considered one of the most powerful anti-aircraft defense systems in the world. Turkey has more than 100 of F-35 on order. Not only this, being one of the major partners, it is responsible for the production of certain components of F-35 and will also provide maintenance support to other European countries on the jet. In July of last year, Turkey reportedly signed the deal to co-produce the S-400 surface-to-air missile system with Russia, which has resulted in a deadlock situation. The U.S. Senate has now added a clause to its version of the annual defense budget bill for the 2019 fiscal year that seeks to block the transfer of F-35 Joint Strike Fighters to Turkey. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the U.S. doesn't want Turkey to have both American F-35 and Russian S-400. Let's get in the details. Turkey has insisted that since it currently has Cold War era surface to air missiles, it requires an upgrade and S-400 fits it perfectly. The United States, NATO nations and members of the Joint Strike Fighter program are all concerned that the agreement could enable Russia to derive secret technical data of F-35's capabilities, since S-400 will monitor the same airspace in which the F-35 will operate. S-400 will be able to provide F-35 stealth characteristics and radar signatures. This could potentially pass onto Russian hands and give them an unprecedented advantage in future conflicts. In addition, having the S-400 linked into Turkish defense networks could potentially give Russian technicians access to sensitive information that passes through the cloud-based Multinational Autonomic Logistics Information System ALICE, system, which has critical mission data and flight routes. The newly added clause doesn't allow Pentagon to use its finance to facilitate the transfer of F-35s or its technical data or support services to Turkey. According to plan, once the F-35s meant for Turkey are ready for transfer, they will be transported to Luke Air Force Base, Arizona, where Turkish pilots will join the F-35A training pool. But at the base, Turkey's F-35s will need all kinds of support from U.S. military to enable them and in the absence of that, the jets may get grounded there indefinitely. Turkey could transfer its F-35s to a base on its own territory, but that won't solve the problem. F-35 is heavily dependent on Autonomic Logistics Information System ALICE, system for software updates and crucial mission data. Without access to ALICE, the F-35's capabilities will be degraded to a very large extent. If U.S. provides access to ALICE, it can be used to inject codes that can disable the jets completely. Viewers may note that only Israel has the rights to change the F-35 software suite and operate its jets independent of ALICE. Even if Turkey somehow managed to find a workaround in the software department, the jet will still need regular hardware maintenance and repair to be airworthy. Turkey being unable to use its jets doesn't mitigate the security risk. Turkey could potentially take some corrosive steps if the relations go downhill. It can hand over the jets to Russia and China for inspection, which will be a major blow. Till now, there is no indication of the same. There have also been unconfirmed reports that Turkey has shown interest in Russian Su-57 
fifth generation fighter jet and could check the feasibility of co-producing the jets. Turkey could also seek Russia's assistance in developing its own indigenous TFX stealth fighter program. Both the options will set back Turkey from acquiring a fleet of advanced new fighters by several years, but the F-35 program will lose a major partner and reduced orders. This will increase the cost of the already costly aircraft and also result in logistic challenges as Turkey is supposed to provide maintenance support to many of the European buyers. It will be difficult for US and NATO to sideline Turkey in this late stage. A delegation led by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has reportedly tried to make a deal with Turkey. The proposed idea allows Turkey to take delivery of the S 400s but not use them. This is designed to allow President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's government, which has stood firm over the issue, to save face. But this deal seems to have been rejected by the Turkish side. It remains to be seen how things pan out in this complex situation. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.